how to create a star trail animation effect in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. Inside your project edit window, open effects, underneath toolbox, select effects, and go to drag a fusion composition effect filter to your edits timeline. Select your new edit, hold in control or command if you're a Mac user and press D to alter the duration of your fusion composition clip. In this particular example, I will adjust this to 10 seconds so that I am able to see the full star trail effect after following all the tutorial's instructions. Right click on your fusion composition clip and go to open in fusion page. Inside your fusion nodes panel, hold in shift and press space. Use the search box at the bottom of the new select tool window to find the S star node. Select this and go to click on add. With this new tool selected, go to inspector and underneath controls, change the number of star points from six to five. Adjust the depth level depending on how pointed you want each of your points to be on your star shape. Decrease width and height to 0.1. Ensure that you are at the first frame of your fusion composition clip. Here in this example, it will be frame zero, as indicated by the red line on the fusion timeline. Go to click on the keyframe diamond icon next to angle. By default, the frame rate for a fusion composition clip in DaVinci Resolve is 24. I wish for my star shape to complete a full 360 degree turn after two seconds of screen time. I will advance forward to frame 47 by clicking and adjusting the frame number underneath the fusion timeline, return to angle and change the value in this box from zero to 360 to make the star rotate in anti-clockwise format. To make the star rotate clockwise instead, change this value to minus 360. Here in this example, I will maintain this value at 360. To choose the color of your star, select style, double click on the white box underneath this option and select the vibrant yellow basic color option from your pick screen color menu, which should contain the HTML code hash FFFF00. We will also apply this color shade to the particles later on. Click OK. In order to ensure that this 360 degree rotation repeats as the animation plays, regardless of the length of my fusion composition clip, open up spline, go to the spline graph, which appears underneath your fusion timeline, Click in the box next to S star one. Adjust the size of your spline graph by dragging the circular gray nodes at the top to the left so that you zoom out and you can see the two boxes, each representing the keyframes that we previously applied to the angle variable. Click and drag your cursor to highlight both of these and go to click on set loop underneath so that the rotation repeats endlessly. Click on the spline icon to close this graph. Return to frame zero. Go to X offset and set this to minus 0.6 to position the star off screen to the left of your canvas. Select the keyframe diamond icon for X offset. Adjust Y offset if you wish to adjust the star's vertical positioning instead. Here in this example, I will keep this value at zero so that it glides across the middle of the screen horizontally. I wish for the star to complete its trajectory after five seconds of screen time. I will therefore advance forward to frame 120 in the frame pointer box. And to have the star exit on the right side of the canvas, I will adjust X offset to 0.6. With S star still selected, hold in shift and press space. In order for DaVinci to process this star shape, we need to add an S render tool. Go to add a P emitter tool from the node selection menu above. We will use this particular node to create the flying spark effects. With this new node selected, under Inspector, increment number to 20. To vary the number of particles that emit from the star slightly, increment number variance to 1. Adjust lifespan depending on how long you wish for the spark effects to last on screen for. I will keep this set to 100. And to add variety in terms of how long each spark lasts for, I will increment lifespan variance to 10. To make the particles move, open up Velocity. Increment velocity to 0.1. Since our star is moving from left to right, I wish for the particles to flow in the direction that the star is coming from, towards the left side. Therefore, I will change angle to 180. 
to vary the angle in which each of the particles flow to as they emit from the star, I will increment angle variance to 50. Avoid using a number too close to your original angle value to prevent too much deviation in the direction in which the particles flow. To generate the appearance of the particles themselves, go to Style, change style from Point to Blob. Go to Color Controls, double click on the white color box, and apply the same color as we did with our star using the code hash FFFF00. Click OK. To have the particles get smaller throughout their lifespan, double click on size controls, increment the value for size to 0.4 so that the particles are significant enough as they emerge from the star, and to vary the size of the particles that emit from the star, I will increment size variance very slightly to 0.05 and to have the particles decrease in size to emphasize the fade out effect, I will go to the size over life graph and drag the node on the right side towards the bottom right corner so that the particles get smaller throughout their lifespan. Scroll down even further in your inspector window to find fade controls, open this, and to have the particles fade out in the final 50% of their lifespan, I will decrease the value for out here to 0.5. Scroll up to your inspector options for this p-emitter node. In order to have the particles emit from the star itself, we need to go to region and change region from sphere to bitmap. On your nodes grid, you should see a yellow arrow now appearing alongside p-emitter 1. Click on the gray box next to S render 1 and drag this to the yellow arrow alongside p-emitter 1 to make a connection. With p-emitter 1 still selected, hold and shift and press space and go to add P turbulence. With this new node selected, go to inspector and underneath controls, increment X, Y and Z strengths to 0.5 to create a strong wind simulation effect. And in order for DaVinci Resolve to process these particle effects, with P turbulence still selected, hold and shift and press space once again, and go to add P render. Ensure that this new node is set to 2D in the inspector window. With PRender1 still selected, to apply vibrancy to your star particle effect, hold and shift and press space, and go to add glow. With this new tool selected, under inspector and controls, enhance the vibrancy by incrementing glow from 0.8 to 0.925. With glow1 still selected, hold and shift and press space once again and go to add a merge tool, which we will use to combine the particles and the star shape together. Click on the gray box next to S render one once again, which you previously connected to P emitter one without disconnecting the yellow line connecting P emitter one to this and drag your mouse cursor to the green arrow alongside merge one so that your star is placed in front of the particles so that the sparks don't obscure the star in any way. To add a gentle glow to the entire effect, with Merge 1 still selected, hold and shift and press space once again, and go to add Soft Glow. With this new node selected, go to Inspector and underneath Controls, to prevent too much vibrancy from the sparks themselves, so that the star appears the more vibrant object on screen, increment Threshold to 0.2. Increment Glow Size to 20 to spread the blended glow out further from the particles and the star and to reduce the blurred glow appearing around your star and spark particles as the animation plays, reduce blend slightly to 0.6. Connect Soft Glow 1 to Media Out 1 to complete your video. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video is useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video, take care.